Now, in case you forgot, since it's been so long, but the last Star Wars film to hit theaters was The Rise of Skywalker back on December 20th of 2019, or just over two and a half years ago at this point. And I think it's interesting that since then, or in that time, despite everything basically being pushed back a year because of the pandemic, we've had five MCU films come out, and we'll have no less than five more before the next Star Wars film comes out in... Well, we still don't actually know when that will be, when the next Star Wars movie will hit theaters. Because, you see, despite announcing roughly a year and a half ago that Rogue Squadron would be the next film to come out in December of 2023, it turns out that Patty Jenkins, who was set to write and direct that film, is just too busy to pencil in Star Wars. Too busy to pencil in what, at least once was, arguably one of, if not the, top film franchises of all time, Something you'd think any writer and or director would be bending over backwards to be a part of and to make time for. And so learning after that film, learning Rogue Squadron was indefinitely delayed, there were then rumors that perhaps the Taika Waititi Star Wars film, which was announced over two years ago, would take its place and come out next December. But he has recently said, despite again his film being announced two years ago, that he hasn't even started writing it, much less there being any potential start to filming coming up this year, which means virtually no chance of hitting a December 2023 release date. And that's not even close to the only thing he's recently said about his Star Wars project. In fact, in an interview with Rolling Stone, Taika Waititi said, and he's referring to Natalie Portman here, who is in Thor Love and Thunder, a film he did find the time for, anyway, he said this, Natalie said to me, what do you do next? And I said, I'm trying to work on a Star Wars thing. Have you ever wanted to be in a Star Wars movie? She said, I've been in Star Wars movies. I forgot about those. He laughed. And before I even discuss that, let's take a quick look at what else he said in this same interview. But I just feel like for me, I'm never going to please the fans. You know, I don't want to mess with something that is so treasured. Also, you feel like you've got to do a lot of research, and I don't have any time. He laughs and continues. I mean, there's thousands of books that have been written. These volumes of books about Star Wars with all those characters, I just don't have time to get through them. Okay, so first of all here, yes, we should keep in mind that Taika Waititi is a bit of a jokester or comedian, and since this is all taken from a written interview, not a video or anything, we have no idea how sort of tongue-in-cheek he was being here, how much he was just kind of kidding around with the interviewer, and how much he was being serious. We don't know if he really forgot or didn't know that Natalie Portman was already in Star Wars playing Padme in the prequels, as I'm sure pretty much every single person watching this video knows. Or if it's just something that slipped his mind in the moment, and later on, for this interview, he thought it would be a funny story to tell. I mean, if you've seen any interview with him, you know he's usually just having fun with it and being a bit wacky. And so, though I'm not saying that's not troubling at all to hear or shouldn't potentially be a sort of red flag that apparently he forgot about the prequels, it's actually what else he said that's more worrying, in my opinion, that he just doesn't have time for or doesn't want to do any research for his upcoming Star Wars film. And again, I'll say we have no idea how much he was just kidding around or trying to be humorous when he said that. Not to mention, he's already directed an episode of The Mandalorian and he voiced IG-11 in the series. So yeah, he does apparently have some Star Wars knowledge. But I do think he was essentially telling the truth. I don't really think he has a ton of time or wants to make a ton of time to sit down and do his research when it comes to Star Wars. And honestly, hearing him say that doesn't necessarily make me mad at him. It's certainly on some level a bit disappointing, frustrating, and absolutely worrying for the eventual movie itself, if it ever even gets made. But the thing is, he didn't hire himself, right? Somebody else thought he was the right man for the job and brought him in to make a Star Wars film. Despite it really sounding like or looking like from the lack of progress on the film after being announced over two years ago, again, he hasn't even started writing and doesn't even have an idea for it, he admitted recently. Anyway, it really doesn't seem like writing and directing a Star Wars film was something he himself wanted to do or was even pursuing, much less prioritizing. It seems more like it was something simply offered to him because, as I've talked about before in other videos, Star Wars has had this really bad habit recently of going out and hiring the what's hot now writers and directors instead of simply looking for the absolute best person for the job for someone who will, you know, kind of have an idea for the film and story before being hired and then will prioritize it above all else because it's Star Wars 
and that name means something in the industry, or at the very least, it used to. The hiring of Benioff and Weiss from Game of Thrones fame is the perfect example of this. Shortly after signing on to do a whole trilogy of Star Wars films, they bailed because Netflix offered them more money, which again, I don't so much blame them for. They were a hot commodity and went with the highest bidder, essentially. And if they were willing to ditch Star Wars, if they didn't see it as something that important to them, if more money was something that would lure them away, though in their defense it was a lot more money, I'm not sad to see them go. I'm actually happy they left if it was just something they were doing for the money and prestige they could attain, not what they could add to Star Wars or how they could honor it. Basically, and you can call me an entitled fan if you want, but in all reality, Lucasfilm should want the exact same thing. But I want people working on Star Wars who will see it as a privilege to get a chance to work on it. I want people who will prioritize it above all else and will make the time to do the necessary research, or better yet, already be pretty much a Star Wars expert. I don't want them to hire people who will put it on the back burner until they finally have a little bit of free time to squeeze in making a Star Wars film. And considering how often this is happening, how often Star Wars is being treated like a second-class franchise these days, that everyone has better things to do over it, well, it's all gotta be a little or a lot embarrassing for Lucasfilm and the one running it to keep having writers and or directors bail on you or to say how there's a few other projects they want to do before they finally get to yours. And it's gotta be especially embarrassing to hear everything Taika Waititi just said, even if it was meant as a joke, which again, it really could have been. You've got to feel like you're being played for a fool when one of the writer-directors you hired admits they don't remember some of the movies in your franchise and don't want to do any research before making a film for you. They don't want to do research for what is more or less a half-billion-dollar venture for your company. But the most baffling part of all here has to be, how does someone who said what he did even get hired in the first place? I mean, can you imagine someone saying something like that in an actual job interview? Hearing them basically say they don't know your product, don't care to learn it, and don't have time or want to put forth any effort to do the best job they possibly can. And sure, it's one thing if they're applying to flip burgers at McDonald's. Hell, the manager interviewing that person might appreciate their honesty and candor and give them the job anyway. But in the case of Taika Waititi, we're talking about someone who is going to make, by writing and directing, an entire movie, who is going to design and then create the very product you will try to sell and profit from. This isn't the guy that will be flipping the burgers, it's the one designing the burger you're going to try to sell to the masses, and he basically just admitted he doesn't remember eating any of your burgers before, and doesn't even want to try any before making something for your customers to consume. That's the guy you hired to reinvigorate your franchise on the film front, to bring it back to the forefront after a long hiatus that just keeps getting longer. And of course, the one who hired him is none other than Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm. And to be frank, I have no idea how she still has a job, how she hasn't been fired, unless she's perhaps just a figurehead. And Lucasfilm is actually being micromanaged from above that the big wigs at Disney are making all the really big decisions and thus all these hiring mistakes. But assuming that's not the case, it's not only been nearly three years since Kennedy got a Star Wars film in theaters, but at this rate it might be another three years before she finally does. Because as far as we know, there is nothing even being worked on right now, nothing in any stage of actual pre-production that will be ready to begin filming in the near future, much less be out in theaters soon. And despite, yes, the success Star Wars has arguably seen on Disney+, Plus, I've got to imagine when Disney purchased Lucasfilm for $4 billion dollars, the plan was to, at the very least, get one movie a year into theaters, and for those films to be netting them a couple hundred million per effort, they cannot be happy with this long film drought. Especially not while, again, Marvel just keeps cranking out one film after the other that people keep going to see. And I'm certainly not saying I want to see Star Wars films come out at the same breakneck pace as Marvel films, or that I think it should become just like the MCU. In fact, and mind you, I say this as someone who is a fan of the MCU, the last thing I want is for Star Wars to be treated like that, to feel like a little more than a conveyor belt of films, where there's always five more already lined up, where it feels like we're getting another movie every few months. Because, and you certainly don't have to agree with me on all this, but I want Star Wars to feel special again. I want the coming of and arrival of a new film to feel almost like a little mini event, and a fairly rare one at that, but not so rare that long stretches go by, years in this case where we have no idea when and what to expect next, 
we don't need to know the next five films coming, but at least knowing the next one and having a release date would be pretty nice. And personally here, and again, you can disagree if you want, but I think a cadence of a movie every year and a half to two years would work just fine, especially with multiple seasons of shows each and every year on Disney+. Plus. Again, let's try to make them feel special again, yet at the same time, yeah, let's actually get them going again too. And along with that, along with the idea of Star Wars films being special again, it's really time to stop hiring the what's hot now commodities and to bring people in who really and truly want to work on Star Wars above anything and everything else, who will stop putting it on the back burner till they have the time. Again, it's embarrassing how Lucasfilm is letting one of the greatest franchises ever be treated and disrespected by the people they keep hiring. And I'm not saying everyone they hire has to devote their very existence to Star Wars or be an expert, but they have to at least be willing to put in the time to watch and remember the prequels, I'd say. And in her defense, yes, Kathleen Kennedy has recently said that they need to hire people who will devote the time needed to Star Wars, which could be up to three to five years to get it done right. But honestly, if you're truly finding the right people for the job, that's a requirement you won't even have to mention because that's what they'll want to do anyway. And I really have no idea how it's so hard to find people who know and want to work on Star Wars of all things, or how it's taken so long for them to figure out that the best people to hire are those who actually want to work on it and who want to put in the time. The best people to hire to make Star Wars, oddly enough, are people who care about and want to make Star Wars. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about what Taika Waititi said. Does it bother you? Do you think it was a joke? Or what is the case here? Also, how often do you think Star Wars films should come out? Do you want them to feel like events again? Or should they just stop making films and focus on Disney Plus series, perhaps? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.